on today's World Insight. The recent Summer Camp Summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization doubles down on mission to better work together in the spirit of mutual respect and the right to chart own path. Let us count the ways. This is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. The 2022 summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization adopted the Summer Camp Declaration, which enshrines non-interference in other states' affairs before the summit ended Friday last week. The SCO leaders have published for pushing building international relations based on mutual respect, fairness, and justice. The organization has agreed to carry on with cooperation in counterterrorism, cracking down on drug trafficking. They also called on the international community to make the United Nations the place for resolving disputes. SCO member states rejected the militarization of information technology and sought World Trade Organization reforms. An SCO wrap-up also touched on safeguarding food and energy, as well as climate actions and keeping a stable supply chain. Chinese President Xi Jinping has called on members of the SCO to uphold the Shanghai spirit. That means an emphasis on mutual trust and benefit, respect, equality, consultation, and common prosperity. For deeper understanding of the latest outcome of SEO Summit, let's loop in our panelists. In Tehran, Mohammed Morandi, professor of Tehran University. In Moscow, Alexander Lukin, director of the Center for East Asian and SEO Studies from Moscow State International relations of the Institute and also in Beijing Rong Ying vice president of China Institute of International Studies gentlemen welcome to the program among the many outcomes that is stated clearly in the declaration some points really attracted the international attention first of all the food and energy security that is a focus of international debates now mr. looking very briefly from you how do you see SEO will be able to serve its role? It has both the suppliers and the consumption, as well as the channel for transmission. Well, you mean, if you mean the food uh, security. Uh, and energy, well, it's a very important topic for SEO, but unfortunately the SEO well, let, uh, let, let me say this. Uh, SCO is, has uh, three main topics. First topic is security, uh, I, I mean like political security, international security. Second is economics and third is, um, you know, cultural cooperation. And economic cooperation is not uh, the strongest part of that. Uh, the cooperation between individual country members uh, quite uh, is quite strong. Well, we know that, for example, China is the first trading partner of Russia, at least since uh, 20, uh, 2010. Uh, but there were plans of, uh, of uh, energy cooperation in SCO and uh, uh, even uh, a special uh, institute, uh, the energy, energy Club was created. But that, unfortunately, it is not very active. So I hope uh, in this situation, when you know, we really need such cooperation, it's going to be more active okay. in, the, in, in this. We've already seen quite some increase bilaterally and sometimes uh, even in networks of uh, countries of cooperation. That is already happening. Professor Morandi, Iran, a member uh, likely to be after signing the uh, memorandum, also is a big oil producer besides Russia among many in the SCO. Meanwhile, you also see Saudi Arabia, UAE being dialogue partners or likely to become dialogue partners. So how do you see energy crisis is likely to be handled by the frameworks of SCO, particularly with the outcome this time? Professor Morandi. 
The SEO is still developing, and I think it's uh, fair to say that the progress in the development of the SEO is very encouraging. And we see both uh, major energy producers as members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, as well as ener major energy consumers. And Asia is on the rise. Every, I think by now everyone recognizes that that the, the world is the center of wor the world economy is shifting away from the West towards the East, tor from Europe and the United States towards Asia. And therefore, the more these leaders gather together, both within the context of a collective, uh, in, a, in a collective meeting for the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, mm. the better it is for, for uh, multilateral cooperation. But also, it provides a very important opportunity for bilateral uh, relations between countries on the sidelines of this organization. Yeah. So, uh, Iran is uh, planning to uh, cooperate more extensively with China, with Russia, with India. And I think the same is true between Russia and China, Russia and India, and also India and China. The more these leaders sit down together, both okay. around the table and on the sidelines, the better it is for the development both, both of, for the consumer mm. and the producer, as well in, as in other areas such as culture uh, that your, my focusing, colleagues spoke of. Yeah, focusing once again on energy, Mr. Rong, from your perspective, how do you understand the discussion among economies of the SEO? We understand the financial uh, and trade economic ties and cooperation this time is very much on the uh, priority list of the latest uh, SEO summit. Yeah, it is true. I think SEO over the past 20 years or more has very much uh, sort of uh, focus and uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, making progress on the, on the security front while it's been not as even or as developed as in other areas, uh, uh, economic development, trade, investment. I think in, the, in today's world where the changes, transformation, and the global uh, geopolitics is undergoing, yeah. taking uh, over, and it is good, I think, for SEO to come up with a statement and common position that in the field of energy security, where, as our two colleagues have said, that in this group there are both consumers and uh, producers. So uh, I think uh, even though in, in, in the near future, I mm -hmm. think uh, on the question of energy, energy security, SEO may not as sort of important or may not play as such an important role as other existing organization, the OPEC and the other and the energy. Mm -hmm. I believe that this time the statement, the, the MOU that has been issued by SCO means a lot. Means, I think, a lot in the sense that it is for the first time, as far I can see, I think SCO comes as a common position. So you want to have their voice on the right. question of energy, energy transition and energy uh, uh, governance. So do they, the economies of SEO, trying to make a common position also on the global and regional supply chains. Several words were being used, Mr. Rong and uh, Professor Morandi, if I could quote here, secure, stable, diversified supply chain. We all know with ever more complex geopolitics, global supply chain has been shattered. And therefore, these economies, many are developing and emerging economies within SEO. How would they be able to make sure that one could help the others uh, in this framework to uh, provide more alternatives to the already existing and yet being challenged the global supply chain. Professor Morandi, your thoughts on that? Uh, well, when we look at the map, uh, there is, it's, it's quite interesting that the world's largest reserves of natural gas are in Russia. The second largest uh, reserves for natural gas are in Iran. And then between Russia and Iran in, in Central Asia, you have huge gas reserves in Turkmenistan. So already, a huge amount of energy 
which is basically clean energy compared to other forms of, of fuel like oil, is available to very key markets, meaning China first and foremost as the uh, largest economy among the members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And of course, there's India as well and other, and other state, uh, members of the organization, which are huge consumers and whose consumption will increase in, in future. Mm. And the irony is, of course, that Western countries, by sanctioning so many different o energy producers, whether in Latin America or in North Africa or in West Asia, they've created an incentive for these energy producers to look to the east mm. in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in sending fuel or looking, in looking for customers. And of course, uh, it's, there are two issues here. One is that there is the traditional trade route by sea, mm. for example, energy from Iran to the, from the Persian Gulf and other countries in the Persian Gulf. But more importantly, there is the increasingly important role of energy through Central Asia. And Iran and Russia and other countries that wish to export oil or use Central Asia to export their oil, that, that route is better protected from potential adversaries of, of China or, or in, in, in the South China Sea and elsewhere. Uh -huh. So the diversification of the different routes for trade, whether it's energy or whether it's consumer goods, both by land and by sea, I think makes this, uh, this network unique. And the Belt and Road Initiative in this regard, I think, plays a key role alongside the new transit routes between Iran and Russia, the North-South Transit Corridor, yeah. as well as the developing corridor between Iran and Central Asia. Infrastructure is very much emphasized in order to guarantee the uh, real supply chain uh, despite of the changes of the world. Uh, Professor Lukin, how do you see the infrastructures in the Eurasian continent uh, with the emphasis put on by SEO likely to achieve uh, their uh, purposes uh, in terms of providing um, a sufficient uh, interactions among economies within SEO? Well, I entirely agree with my colleague who said that uh, Western policies is now encouraging cooperation between non-Western countries, including the energy sector. Uh, one thing is that, uh, well, let's take uh, Russia, for example. Uh, Russia uh, had a huge cooperation with the, and mostly with the West since the Soviet Union time. It, it was selling uh, oil and gas only to Europe and partly to the United States. But then because of all kinds of sanctions and, uh, you know, hostile policies, it turned to the East. Uh, first of all, to China. It built first an oil pipeline to China, then a natural gas pipeline. Now it's building a, a, another, a, a second gas pipeline. Mm. Uh, and there's a lot of cooperation also between Russia and India as well, the, one of the sure. also largest economies in the world. Sure, at the moment uh, it's very important for Russia because uh, the West is cutting Russia's oil export, imports from Russia, yeah. and therefore it's very important for Russia to sell more, um, uh, more oil to China and to India. And it's uh, good for both, uh, country, for both sides because Russia is selling it with a big discount, about 30%, but it's also good for uh, for consumers for India and China because okay. they are buying more or less cheap uh, oil oil and gas and uh, is good for the economies. So okay. our cooperation is growing. Based on that or related to that, shall we say, there's also the issue of currency. Uh, Professor Rong Ying, that has been a discussion among many SEO economies, not necessarily within the SEO M work, m framework, much, but rather among economies uh, of the Eurasian continent. How do you see this time also in the uh, uh, declaration specifics are being mentioned about the future of currency? Yeah, indeed, I think uh, the uh, SEO members, as their economy is becoming more integrated, and as their uh, relations, political relations, has now becoming more closer and trust are building up, 
Now it is really the high time, or the SEO members will feel, realize that uh, to uh, sort of hedge the, uh, the, the, the risk or danger and to ensure that their uh, trade and investment would become more stable and safe, it would be good, or it is really the right time, right time for them to look at the possibilities of uh, trade uh, and of using their, uh, their local currencies. Mm -hmm. And by cutting or reducing their dependence, after all, I think Russia has been now under uh, sanctions, has been now out of the uh, SWIFT, and there are other sort of uh, uh, risks and possibilities for other members. I think, uh, for example, uh, Iran is already under huge, severe sort of sanctions in finance and other sectors. So it is uh, only natural for SEO, I mean, to look at uh, in the, within the framework to, ex uh, to expand and deepen their mm. cooperation. Maybe it started with bilateral, but uh, gradually I think SEO as a whole would be working along this line. There are already discussions about building a kind of a development bank and looking at the possibilities of uh, expanding their trade in their local currency and so, for, so mm -hmm. forth. Very interesting discussion. Certainly a lot of new trends to observe. Rong Ying, Mohamed Morandi and Alexander Looking stay with us. And you please stay tuned. We'll be back after this. The world is changing fast, taking all our lives with it. But we can change it too by seeking answers to problems through discussions and debates. On World Insight, I ask direct questions to real people in the know, seek genuine answers, but respect diverse perspectives. Our live global debates tackle the most critical issues head on. World Insight with Tian Wei, go beyond the headlines. Images may appear to be identical, but looks can be deceiving. The difference is not always obvious. It has to be discovered. There are always different sides to a story. We put the focus on the details. To see more, to understand better. See GTN. See the difference. This is World Inside with me, Tian Wei. We are focusing on the outcome of the recent SCO summit. With us once again, Professor Morandi in Tehran, Mr. Looking in Moscow, and Rong Ying in Beijing. Gentlemen, let's continue our discussion. The expansion of uh, SCO is also one of the key areas many are looking at this organization. We understand new dialogue partners, new members likely to emerge in the very future, uh, near future, and also new possibilities of new dialogue partners also being developed uh, as a result of this year's uh, SEO Summit. So how, Mr. Rong, do you see the nature and the goals of this quote-unquote expansion? Well, indeed, I think this round, the second round of expansion of SEO after it uh, was established, I think in, also in the wake of 2017, when India and Pakistan became the uh, full members. This time mm -hmm. uh, we have the uh, uh, Iran, and we also, I think, SEO look at the, uh, uh, the launch, actually, started the process of having a bear rush. Russia uh, uh, to become the full members, and then Belarus, uh, Belarus ex excuse me, and and also I think uh, the uh, other uh, dialogue partners like Egypt, the Bahrain, Saudis, and and the others. So this this I think a very strong indication uh, of the the vitality vitality of us of SEO, and more importantly the. the the sort of importance uh, mm. attached by these uh, potential uh, members. And, uh, and the last but not least, I also strongly feel and impressed by the uh, so, sort of the, uh, the attempt by the ICO to become open, to become inclusive, not like the other uh, sort of uh, organizations was meant to 
build up a kind of exclusive club uh, targeting or aimed at this, uh, a particular or country or a party. Mm. So that this is actually is a key point here. Uh, in the declaration put out by the ICO summit, that there were specific mentioning of this aspect of what the expansion and the nature of SEO will be in the future. It's talking about non-alliance, uh, non-confrontational, and also not targeting any third party. Now, uh, Professor Morandi, uh, even though some members of SEO have been regarded by some Western countries as the, uh, the enemy or the foes, uh, yet SEO seem to be quite clear once again, this is not an alliance, it is not NATO, it is not G7, it is an organization that is uh, uh, focusing on inclusiveness and cooperation, and that has been the key and will be the key. Yes, I think the mentality that is dominant in the SEO is very different from what we see regularly in Western countries, whether it's NATO or the EU, where it's like an exclusive club. Uh, for example, we know that Turkey has been trying for many decades to become a part of the European Union, but they simply won't let it in. They won't let it become a member. But the SEO is a, a, a grouping of major, very important countries, uh, very powerful countries, but independent countries. This mm -hmm. is not a military alliance. It's not intended to uh, uh, create its own adversaries. It's supposed to bring these countries together to coordinate their efforts to develop their countries and to help develop the whole of Asia, regional yeah. development, the continental development. So these countries are sitting together both as a collective to discuss political issues, economic issues, social issues, cultural issues, and on the sidelines to, to, to also discuss bilateral issues and perhaps t trilateral issues mm. in order to hammer out any potential differences or difficulties that may exist. Right. But it's not even focused on what NATO is doing or what the EU is doing. What it is looking at is Asia itself. And one of the unique aspects of this organization is that it is basically from the global south. It is, it, it is Asian countries coming together without some uh, Western country there. It's a, series, a number of countries that have their own interests at heart and they are there to fulfill their needs and their mm -hmm. aspirations. This is quite a trial in a way, a uh, tryout period of a new different version of uh, international organizations and regional organizations. Uh, Professor Lukin uh, in Russia, how do you see though, even though this is not an alliance, but how do you see events elsewhere in the world and in the region likely to shape uh, SEO and at the same time, the development and involvement of SEO likely to shape events elsewhere in the world? I think the policy of the West is already shaping, in a way, SEO, because uh, it leads the hostile policy of the West towards uh, uh, many of the countries of uh, non-Western world, such as Russia, China, Iran, and, uh, and they are not very satisfied with India at the moment. Uh, so uh, it Unfortunately, I think it's an unfortunate event, but it's reality. It's uh, uh, dividing the world again uh, between the West and the rest, uh, the Western world and non-Western world. And of course, because the Western world is consolidating, uh, the non-Western world also has to look for, uh, uh, for ways of uh, deepening its cooperation. And Shanghai Cooperation uh, organization is one of the main left. There are others, of course, the BRICS group, the ASEAN, and several other non-Western organizations. But SCO is probably the most important of them because it unites the most important Asian. I like, by the way, that my colleague called finally Russia an Asian country uh, because, because it's, it is Asian. Two thirds of its territory is in Asia. So, all right, uh, Professor Brown. Of course, uh, this is uh, a very big organization, SEO itself. If you look at the population, half of that of the 
um, and also the GDP, if you look at that, 24% of the world, and it's still growing. China, India, some of the largest emerging economies in the world, if you look at population as well. Um, so the trends being set by this organization, particularly this time, out of tremendous changes in the world, uh, out of the declaration of SEO summit, how do you see that will be interpreted and having their impacts uh, on how people think about things, how people look at themselves and look at their relations with others? Well, I think the biggest impact of SEO or the attempt by, by SEO is that it is with its efforts and with, I think, an example, uh, 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 and solidarity and cooperation. It's now providing a, an, an alternative, a different sort of a vision uh, from the existing regional organizations dominated by the West to uh, promote cooperation, not confrontation, to push for a kind of uh, 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 interaction engagement based on mutual respect and, and mutual benefit and to, uh, to promote a kind of a dialogue uh, uh, despite the differences, the diversity of civilizations and to achieve common development. That's exactly the element of the Shanghai spirit. And that is, I think, what makes a CEO uh, uh, successful, I mean, for, for the past uh, 20 years more. And it will mm -hmm. become the guide become the framework where I think SEO will be succeeding or in its efforts, in its uh, sort of uh, to mm. fulfill its vision in the future. Mm. That's, I think, what makes SEO different. That's what makes it hopeful. Yeah. Finally, before we wrap up, uh, we would love to invite one or two sentences from every one of you. If I remember right, uh, the Chinese president uh, in his uh, speech, the last paragraph at SEO Summit talk about even though the road could be still long, and yet uh, uh, the starting point is already uh, making it uh, the most important step to take. So uh, on that, uh, many wonder about the efficiency and implementation uh, capabilities of SEO. What do you see uh, could be the focus of people's attention from now on uh, already the summit wrapped up? Uh, Professor Morandi, one or two sentences, please. Well, I was in Uzbekistan for the SEO Summit, and what I can say is that um, many, many strong steps forward have already been taken during this particular uh, gathering, and yeah. I think it is uh, a, a, a turning point. We are going to be living in a very different world in the months ahead and years ahead, and I think that this organization we'll see is going to play a very, very important role right. in the months and years to come. Professor Lukin, briefly. Well, I've been studying SEO for a long time, and I think that the main thing for it to do now would be to implement more effectively its decisions, because it also it always takes a lot of good decisions, but not all of them are implemented. So that's we should be more practical in our non-Western okay. part. Professor Rong, one sentence, please. We're running out of time. Thank you. Well, I think this summit marks the uh, uh, sort of a beginning of a new era. Even though SEO, there's a long way to go, but I think it is going to be the most hopeful and the most promising regional organizations. Rong Ying, Alexander Luke, Mohammed Morandi, thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. That's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to know more, search World Insight. Check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.